Hey guys, welcome to the studio again, and let me just show you quickly what I'm working on. This is a quickie little song idea, may turn into something, uh, but at any rate, I'm just having a lot of fun doing it, and maybe this will help you guys out. This is just three tracks only, all virtual instruments, and was very easy to create, and to me, it really already starts to sound full and complete at this point, and I just wanted to show you what I've got going with it. First off, I used Addictive Drums, which came with Sonar Platinum. This is their user interface here. And Tune Track Easy Keys. And lastly, the bass guitar session, in session instruments that came with Cakewalk. But what I did first off is I just went ahead and I just went into Addictive Drums. Which I think sound great by the way. But I went in and I just selected a kit which I thought sounded pretty good. You can go in here and you can see you can kind of tweak things to your desire. And, well, let me get back to that real quick here. And I just went to their Beats page, and you can see there's a huge list of MIDI files that they have. And you can, I'm not going to get into in-depth in the program here, but pretty much what I did is I just picked out a song and threw it up there on a track. And I added a couple of fills where needed. And that's really all I did with that. It's just an idea. I may come in and tighten it up a little bit later. So I always like to put the drums down first rather than just listening to a click track. And you can see I'm just looping this right now. I've got uh, 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 how many bars there? I got there. Uh, 40, 42 bar loop there. And then I went to uh, Easy Keys and I just picked out the same thing here where went into their browser and you can see you have all kinds of choices the same kind of format uh, you can pick straight swing whatever and I think I picked something that was kind of a gospel thing and picked the verse and I just listened to these different variations and you can drag them down into this area here again I'm not going to get into in depth in these particular programs because I think there's YouTubes that are better suited for that that show that. And once I had the MIDI created there, I went ahead and just dragged it into this track here. Let me just stop this here and I'll show you. See, here's a block of MIDI. Here's a block of MIDI. There's a block of MIDI, another block, and I just kind of assembled these all together. Again, here, there was one huge block that came out of Addictive Drums, American Rock Song number two here, and like I say, I threw in a couple of uh, fills. And then the same thing with the bass guitar. I've got separate blocks of MIDI here, and with that particular instrument, you can choose... Uh, the different styles here they don't have a lot of selection here but it's, it's pretty good and you can choose different beats and then what you can do is you can change the tuning of it basically what key it's in but I pretty much just throw some of these rhythmic ideas down on the piano roll and then I can get in here and then alter these and what I like doing here is is having two together here and try to get them to sync together so it gives you some tight fills if you listen here at the end. And that makes things pretty tight there. But I just basically got the main riffs and the main ideas 
from the individual program. And then I like to go into the console view. Yeah, let me just kind of close that out. I'm using the console emulation here, and they're pretty much all set the same. And I'll just close these out so we can see the other modules. But I went into the addictive drums, and uh, I'm probably putting some of these effects on a little early, but I like putting on uh, a little bit of compression. And this is good because it has a wet dry mix. Adds a little punch. Little EQ, you can see where I rolled off down on the bass here a little bit. Add a little bit of high end. And same with the keys. I rolled it off a little bit higher. Basically getting rid of some of the rumble down here. And then with the bass. Oops. Here we go. I rolled it off and then I added a little bit of oomph down here at the bottom end. And just below 100 hertz. And you can hear the difference that that makes. And I like that so far. It seemed to be working out. I like this little chorus that you can get. Uh, it was 10 bucks at the Cakewalk store. And it makes a big difference here. A lot of people would say a uh, stereo bass is a no-no, but I happen to like it. I put my kicks up the middle anyway. And then lastly, I threw a little haw reverb on everything to kind of glue it together. And I'm using this brand new Rematrix Solo, and I kind of went through and selected a reverb that I like, ultra wide. And it just kind of glues it all a little bit together. I've just got one send on each here. Here's my keys. And you can hear I just barely have the drums in there. Add a little bit of the bass. You can barely hear that. And I thought that kind of glued it all together here. Yeah, I'll shut that reverb off. And I thought it just kind of added everything together. Finally, I, like I say, this is probably premature in the mix here, but I threw in a little another module, the CA2A, and another compressor that likes to go right in front of that. And I'm just hitting a very light. You can see I'm barely even touching the CA2A right now. And there you go, three tracks that I think sounds pretty good. You ready for some vocals on top, or lead guitar, or whatever you want to do. In fact, I already used another video, uh, used this music in another video, and just used it for a backing track. It worked out great. And that's it. Three tracks in Cakewalk Sonar Platinum. Thanks for watching, guys.